Good morning. morning. Welcome you all to Mount Calvary on this 18th Sunday after the Pentecost as we continue to rejoice in the good gifts of Christ that come to us through the ministry of his church. So is there a couple of things I draw your attention to before we get started? First, for those of you who are joining us online, if you want to get a copy of the bulletin to follow along, go to our website, www.mountcalvarypeoria, all one word, .org, and then look under news and announcements and you'll see the link to get that. For the rest of you all, look around and wave at one another. This is as close to passing the peace as we get right now. There we are. You are all at peace with one another now. Uh, As always, we invite you to fill out one of the registration cards. You can drop that off in the offering plate as you leave. And if you choose to leave an offering at that time, you may do so then as well. And with that said, we start with our opening hymn, Rise, Shine, You People. I invite you to stand. Turn to page two in the bulletin for the order of confession and absolution. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. I invite you then to examine your conscience now in silence before the Lord according to his word and your station in life. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor and miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have offended you, and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them, and I pray you of your honest mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. 
And upon this your confession, I, by virtue of my office, as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce God's grace to you all. And by the command and in the stead of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Gracious God, you gave your Son into the hands of sinful men who killed him. Forgive us when we reject your unfailing love and grant us the fullness of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And you may be seated. First reading this morning is from the prophet Isaiah, the fifth chapter. Let me sing for my beloved my love song concerning his vineyard. My beloved had a vineyard on a very fertile hill. He dug it and cleared it of stones and planted it with choice vines. He built a watchtower in the midst of it and hewed out a wine vat in it. And he looked for it to yield grapes. But it yielded wild grapes. 
And now, O inhabitants of Jerusalem and men of Judah, judge between me and my vineyard. What more was there to do for my vineyard that I have not done in it? When I looked for it to yield grapes, why did it yield wild grapes? And now I will tell you what I will do to my vineyard. I will remove its hedge, and it shall be devoured. I will break down its wall, and it shall be trampled down. I will make it a waste. It shall not be pruned or hoed, and briars and thorns shall grow up. I will also command the clouds that they rain no rain upon it. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel, and the men of Judah are his pleasant planting. And he looked for justice, but behold, bloodshed. For righteousness, but behold, an outcry. Here ends the reading. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We join in singing portion of Psalm 80 responsibly as printed in the bulletin. Restore us, O God of hosts. Let your face shine that we may be saved. You cleared the ground for it. It took deep root and filled the land. The mountains were covered with its shade. The mighty cedars with its branches. It sent out its branches to the sea and its shoots to the river. The boar from the forest ravages it, and all that move in the field feed on it. Turn again, O God of souls, look down on heaven and see, and regard the Lord The stalk that your right hand planted, and for the Son whom you made strong for yourself. But let your hand be on the man of your right hand, the son of man whom you have made strong for yourself. Then we shall not turn back on you. Give us life and we will call upon your name. Restore us, O Lord God of hosts. Let your face shine that we may be saved. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. second reading continues from Paul's letter to the Philippians, now the third chapter. If anyone else thinks he has reason for confidence in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, as to the law, a Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under the law, blameless. But whatever gain I had, I counted as loss for the sake of Christ. Indeed, I count everything as loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God that depends on faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and may share his sufferings, becoming like him in his death, that by any means possible, I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Not that I've already obtained this or am already perfect, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Brothers, I do not consider that I've made it my own, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Here ends the reading. 
This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite you to stand for the Alleluia. Gospel according to St. Matthew, as recorded in the 21st chapter. Glory be to thee, o Lord. Here, another parable. There was a master of a house who planted a vineyard and put a fence around it and dung a wine press in it and built a tower and leased it to tenants and went into another country. When the season for fruit drew near, he sent his servants to the tenants to get his fruit. And the tenants took his servants and beat one, killed another, and stoned another. Again, he sent other servants, more than the first, and they did the same to them. Finally, he sent his son to them, saying, they will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to themselves, this is the heir. Come, let us kill him and have his inheritance. And they took him and threw him out of the vineyard and killed him. When therefore the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those tenants? They said to him, he will put those wretches to a miserable death and let out the vineyard to other tenants who will give him the fruits in their seasons. Jesus said to them, have you never read in the scriptures the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone? This was the Lord's doing. And it is marvelous in our eyes. Therefore, I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people producing its fruits. And the one who falls on this stone will be broken to pieces. And when it falls on anyone, it will crush him. When the chief priests and the Pharisees heard his parables, they perceived that he was speaking about them. And although they were seeking to arrest him, they feared the crowds because they held him to be a prophet. This is the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise be to thee, O Christ. And now let us confess our faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. And in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only God and Son of God. God of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us as a conscious Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have been made. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who is God and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy tradition and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And you may be seated as we join together for the hymn of the day.
And so I bid you all grace, mercy, and peace. From God the Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. My brothers and sisters in Christ, the stone that the builders have rejected has become the cornerstone. This was the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our sight. Now, there is a lot going on in that reading from Matthew chapter 21. And again, if this were a Bible study, we'd have time to track it all down. But for a sermon, we're going to have to stick to just the high points. So why is Jesus quoting Psalm 118 here? It's to let all know that the very means by which the leaders of the nation, the priests and the elders, purpose to get rid of Jesus, that is also the means by which the Lord Yahweh will make Jesus Savior of all. But it is complex. Because it turns out those leaders, they could have received Jesus as Messiah and he would have been able to restore all things had they accepted him as the promised one come to them from God. But, but since corruption is so deep, they couldn't receive Jesus. Not by their own reason or strength. Like the tenants of that parable, they saw the master's son and they couldn't help but to regard him as a rival who needed to be eliminated so that they could hold on to their power and keep the people under their sway. So indeed they would reject Jesus, the stone of salvation. They would cast him out of Jerusalem, have the Romans execute him, so that his body would hang dead on the tree of the cross, demonstrating once and for all that he was cursed by God. And indeed he did become a curse for us, so that in him we might receive righteousness. And Yahweh the Lord would raise him up and make him the cornerstone for life and forgiveness and hope and grace. The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This was the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. By his death and resurrection, a plan established by God from eternity, in his wisdom and foreknowledge, Jesus would be the chief cornerstone, the foundation, and the source of the kingdom and of salvation and of new life. But one must fall on him, begging for mercy in order to be built onto him. Otherwise, there is only judgment. Loss such as the leaders of Israel would face, darkness and death, crushed by the reality of Jesus' work and his person. Being built on Jesus with the apostles and the prophets for support, that involves being broken first in repentance over sin and the realization of just how messed up we really are. And of course, that isn't fun. No one wants to confront the wrong that he or she has done. No one wants to confess that they're unable to make themselves better by force of will or change of habit. And again, you all know that we live in a culture that tells us every day, right, that we have the power, we have the ability to change who we are and to become whatever we want to be. But Scripture's picture is in such stark contrast to that that sometimes it seems rather defeatist. And yet it tells us the truth. We must fall on Jesus and be broken, confessing our sins, acknowledging the truth so that we can be made new and built up on him and grow up into his image and likeness. Otherwise, if we insist on holding on to our own lives, we will be crushed by Christ's holiness and justice come the last day. But of course, there's more to be said here. Now normally, at this section of Matthew's Gospel, something that we reflect on during Lent leading up to Easter, and in that season, we focus on Christ's work of redemption. But here, in this fall season, as we hear these words now, I think our focus has shifted. And the question is, what does this call us to in Christ? And we can answer that by turning to the parable. Now, all who heard Jesus that day immediately knew what he was talking about. The Old Testament, Israel, the people of God, there in the Old Testament is famously pictured as a vineyard that God planted and provided for, as you heard both from Isaiah and from the Psalm. And the tenants here are the priests and the elders and the leaders that God gave charge over his people to guide them and guard them. The priests and the elders were to uphold judgment and justice. They were to guide the people in reverence toward God. They were to keep the people away from idolatry and falsehood. But what happened? Well, 
the leaders themselves turned from justice and truth and led the people into idolatry and used the people to build up their own wealth and power. And when the prophets were sent to call those leaders to repentance, they ignored and abused the prophets one after another. So Jesus was warning the leaders that day who confronted him and who plotted against him that their actions would lead to their destruction. However, you and I, right, we're not leaders in Israel, so what's here for us? What does this actually call us to? Well, there is a sense in which each and every one of us, each of you, is also the Lord's planting. You, my friends, are a vineyard. You are branches connected to the vine, Jesus. God has given you to flourish spiritually in Christ. He calls you to a life filled with the fruit of the Spirit. All that stuff you might have had to memorize from Galatians, right? You know, love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and gentleness, faithfulness, goodness, self-control. That is the fruit that we, as tenants of the gifts that we are given, are called to yield to God as we sow to the Spirit. As our lives in Christ and in faith are made to be living sacrifices to the one who created us and redeemed us and sustains us, we are his, right? But we still struggle with our inheritance from Adam and Eve. And like the tenants from Jesus' parable, we hoard the fruit to ourselves. We tell ourselves that our lives are ours to do with as we please, that no one has the right to criticize or correct us. And rather than sowing to the Spirit and being generous toward God, we often sow to the flesh, meaning that we give in to selfishness, jealousy, greed, anger, sloth, lust, the desire for revenge. Maybe we tell ourselves that some of our sins aren't really that big a deal. Maybe we tell ourselves that some of our sins aren't sins at all. Maybe we decide that this or that part of our life isn't really subject to to God's oversight, maybe, you know, what we seek for entertainment or what we do for recreation, how we handle our finances, what relationships we pursue. There are all sorts of dodges that our old nature engages in to keep the fruit of our lives to ourselves rather than giving to God in due season. And of course, God sends servants to us as well, right? Pastors, Sunday school teachers, parents, Christian friends, teachers, folks who call us out for our failure to be fruitful towards God. And, and not in order to be judgmental, but to call us back to faithfulness so that we return and flourish and show forth God's light and share in his love and grace. And yet at times, when one of those servants speaks to us an unwelcome word, what happens? We get angry, right? We tell them they have no right to judge us. They aren't our boss. They need to mind their own business, so on. But where does faith begin? with falling on the stone, falling on the cornerstone Jesus in repentance. It begins with hearing God's word and saying, oh, that's right. Yes, I do need to turn around. The parable of the vineyard reminds us that there is a danger in rejecting those who speak God's word to us. For if we keep rejecting the word and holding it at arm's length, if we keep on hoarding the fruit of our lives to ourselves, then we risk rejecting the Son as he comes to us with life and salvation and grace and mercy and love. So let us fall on that stone, which is now the chief cornerstone, Jesus. Let us fall on him and receive him and say yes to his word and thus be built up on the foundation of Christ in his work so that we, together with all the faithful, may be a dwelling place of the Lord in his spirit and thus be servants and witnesses of grace. Even so, amen. And now may that peace that surpasses all understanding guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus until the glorious day of his appearing. Amen. I invite you to stand as we join together to sing the offertory.
Now let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Almighty and eternal God, worthy to be held and reverenced by all men and women, we give you humble and hearty thanks for the innumerable blessings which, without any merit or worthiness on our part, you have bestowed upon us. We praise you especially that you have preserved for us your saving word and the holy sacraments, and we implore you, O Lord, to grant and preserve to your holy church throughout the world purity of doctrine and faithful pastors to preach your word with power. Help all who hear the word rightly to understand and truly to believe it. Send laborers into your harvest and open the door of faith to those who do not know you. In mercy, remember the enemies of your church and grant them repentance unto life. Protect and defend your church in all tribulation and danger. Strengthen us and all fellow Christians to set our hope fully on the grace revealed in Jesus and help us fight the good fight of faith that in the end we may receive the salvation of our souls. Lord, in your mercy. Bestow your grace on all nations of the earth, bless especially our country and its inhabitants and all who are in authority. Let your glory dwell in our land, that mercy and truth, righteousness and peace may abound everywhere. We commend to you the care of all our schools and ask you to grant that our children may grow in useful knowledge and Christian virtue and bring forth wholesome fruits of life. Lord, in your mercy. Graciously defend us from all calamity by fire and water from war and disease, from scarcity and famine and from every other evil. Protect and prosper everyone in her or his rightful calling. And let all useful arts flourish among us. Be the God and Father of the widow and the orphan, the helper of the sick and the needy, and the comforter of the forsaken and the distressed. Lord, in your mercy, accept, we implore you, our bodies and souls, our hearts and minds, our talents and powers, together with the offerings that we shall set before you, for your praise and service. Lord, in your mercy. And hear us this day as we bring our concerns to you in our hearts. Bless the family and friends of Robert Wilson Jr. as they mourn his death and give them comfort and hope in Christ's triumph over the grave. Continue to heal and strengthen Jim Casper, Ardeen Ruckel, Carol Lockridge, Joy Wessler, Penny Boss, Ms. Ritter, Gary Ruckel, Earl Johnston, Natalie Felice, and Cheryl. Give relief to Mark Manthe. Give healing to Brian Kelly, Michael Wilson, Virginia David Shirley, Deaconess Jillian, and Paul. Grant recovery to Grayland and Mark. Continue to strengthen Alice. Grant health and strength to Sheriff Hoffman, Sally Taylor, Ann Bulwark, Marjorie Ruskuski, Earl Boyette, Kathy, Valerie, Chris, Patty, Jim, and Gary. Continue to heal Dave, Lori, Joan, Dale, and Richard. Give continued strength to Jan and Sally. Also be with Cheryl, Rebel, Gloria, Jameson, Richard, Sally, Harold, Steve, and Adriana. Watch over Michelle Taggy and the child that she bears. Susie Fink, Esther, Joan, Jenny Bradley, Pat Getz, Theo Norman. Rebecca, Lois, Tanisha, Jenny, John, Laurel, Constance, Linda, Carl, Kenneth, and Lori, grant them all wellness. Speed healing for Pam and Dolores, bless the Tompkins family and Clara, grant grace to Jackie and her family. Give relief to Kathy and Lil, grant strength and healing to Josh, Bill, Bray, Lynn, and Gabby. Give health to Gordon, Jim, Lloyd, and Elwin. Be with all travelers to give them safe journeys. Also watch over Joanne, Shirley, Max, Miracle, Neil, Shane, Faith, Jenna, Steve, Diane and Wally, Stephen, Jerry, Eric, Gloria, Sandra, and Phyllis. Give grace and healing to Christiane, Ruth, Phyllis, and Roy. Be with Luann and Shelby Cooper, Yasmin, and Gail. Uphold Rick. Give healing to Gary. Strengthen Sharon, Kathy. Give health to Jewel. Be with Debbie Block, Deb Alley, Marsha, Delcy Lane, Michelle Teal, Becky Richards, Dave, Rob Powell, Mark Dickman, Olivia Bradley, Sharon Rumble, Sherry Emberton, Ron Miller, Sam. Larry, Rod, Pastor Center, Ginny, Dave, Shannon, Rudy, Ward, Michael, Dale, Kathy, Gordon, Sandy, Maureen, Pastor Neiman, Mary, Ethan, and Gail, and Jonathan. Give them healing and strength according to your will. Support all those recovering from disasters of various sorts. Be with all those who are working to bring relief in those places and every place where they are needed. We pray that you bring peace and justice to the nations and keep the scourge of war far off. 
We pray for those suffering from the coronavirus and ask you to impede its spread and grant healing and relief, especially to President Trump and Melania. Heal the old divisions that bring bitterness to our nation. We especially implore your grace to bring an end to all ethnic and racial bigotry and grant understanding, grace, and equity to all. We lift up all who have suffered violent attack this last week, praying that you grant mercy, healing, faith, and justice, O Lord, and bring us peace. Watch over Pastor Hake and his family continue to give strength and recovery to Ivy and bless their service in Kyrgyzstan. Bless the ministry of Concordia Lutheran School and be with all students and educators everywhere to keep them in health. Give grace and support to all learning situations. Be with our synod and all its officers, Matthew, our synodical president, Mark, our district president, and all synod and district officials, that they may be guided by your word to do those things that are pleasing in your sight. Grant stability, faith, and hope to all who are struggling in this economy. Bless the people of Haiti as they struggle to recover and establish a stable civil life. Grant shelter and protection to all refugees, especially those displaced by the conflict in Syria. And finally, we ask you to send your spirit of peace to Somalia, Myanmar, the Ukraine, Venezuela, Afghanistan, Ethiopia, Kenya, Nigeria, Burkina Faso, the Middle East, especially Gaza, Iraq, Egypt, Syria, and Yemen, and all places torn by war or civil strife. Lord, in your mercy. We also ask that while many in our nation continue to be in peril and remain in harm's way, that you would watch over us and show your mercy to all who are in danger and who suffer. Comfort those who mourn. Heal those who are injured. Give wisdom and humility to those in authority. Continue to be with Derek Foote, Joshua Zook, Alex Zook, and all deployed in active duty military personnel and their families. Protect all innocent civilians and bring the wicked to justice. Defend the righteous and lead all to repent of evil and seek your peace. We know that all things are in your hands, Father, and we ask that you would bring justice and establish fair government according to your good and perfect will. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And as we are strangers and pilgrims on earth, help us by true faith and a godly life to prepare for the world to come, doing the work that you have given us to do while it is day, before the night comes when no one can work. And when our last hour comes, support us by your power and receive us into your heavenly kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And you may be seated while I prepare the table. I invite you to stand. The Lord be with you. And with my spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who out of love for his fallen creation humbled himself by taking on the form of a servant, becoming obedient unto death, even death upon a cross. Risen from the dead, he has freed us from eternal death, and given us life everlasting. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we loud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing. Oh, holy.
Jesus Christ, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Take, drink, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. You may be seated as we sing the Lamb of God. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. And his mercy is good forever. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same, in faith toward you, and in fervent love toward one another. 
Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Join in the closing hymn. The service has ended. Go in peace.